does anybody in here have a dream? Can I can I say that? Does anybody in here have a dream? Because that's who this is going to be for today. That's who we are going to talk about. I want to talk about certain features of not only having the dream, but then what it's like living through the dream, but getting there to make sure you accomplish the dream. I think this is very related. You, yeah, you have a dream, huh? I got some people with dreams in... <laughs> yes. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. I like people with dreams, honestly. You know, quite frankly, I don't like being around people who don't have dreams. You know, one, one thing's a goal, but I want to dream. You know what a dream is? You do realize how important dreams are. This is why I like this philo. That's why we're going to talk about a, a lot of different things. Uh, simply because, do you realize the dream started, uh, you know, in, in, in many places? That was richest man of Babylon. And then today, I guess the Bible story I'm going to tell you guys is Joseph. Have you guys ever heard about Joseph? Joseph in the Bible. Is anybody familiar with the situation and scenario with Joseph? Let's see. I, I wonder who is uh, who is familiar with how that played out. Uh, I'll wait to see if you guys have the answer, but I'll, I'll continue explaining it. If you're not familiar with the story of Joseph, and I'm excited to share this with you. I was thinking about this the other day. Remember I told you guys I get to spread the good news to some of you. I'm excited some of you don't know these stories, and you do. So it's like, welcome to the family. You get to learn these stories, uh, which is good. Joseph was a dreamer. Exactly. Joseph, uh, he was the guy with the Technicolor dream. He had the dope-ass coat. He had a real, like, tie-dye EDM coat. You know, his coat was dope. His dad liked him a lot and made him this coat. But then one day, Joseph had a dream that he had a, literally had a dream that he was going to uh, rule over his brothers and that his brothers were going were gonna to bow down to him. That's what his dream was at one point. And then his brothers got mad and they sold him off into slavery. They threw him in a hole, told his dad that he got eaten by a lion, and, and they sold him off into slavery. So we're going to talk about it because Joseph's life, honestly, I'll, I'll give you more of the updates on it. It's pretty crazy to think about how his life played out. Uh, actually, what ended up happening, he got thrown into jail, ended up going into slavery. Then he ended up getting into Potiphar's house. This rich guy started working for this rich guy. And then the rich guy let him take over everything. The rich guy was so impressed with how Joseph handled himself that he, uh, you know, Joseph was a good man. He was disciplined. He worked hard. The way he conducted his affairs, even as a slave, uh, it led to him being in Potiphar's house. And what happened, Potiphar was a rich guy. He was very successful. Joseph did a good guy. He, read, he went from being thrown into slavery to rising up and managing this, dude, literally like becoming number two for Warren Buffett. He became like Charlie Munger for this dude. And then what happened, the dude's wife tried to get a little bit of action from Joseph, and then, and then she started lying on him. He wasn't down with it. He was so loyal to Potiphar. He was like, nah, like, why would you do that? And then she threw him in prison. He had to run, and he got thrown into prison, and then he was in prison, and then they liked him so much in prison, he handled his shit so well in prison that even the guard of prisoners gave him an opportunity to, to go before the king and then do, do his thing, and then eventually it led to Joseph saving all of the Egypts. He was good with finances. He knew how to balance the budget. He knew how to save up seven years, seven years feast of famine. The, the, that's where the original seven-year cycle came from. They don't want to hear that, though. They don't, they don't understand that. Come on, now. So that's, the, that's the, the Spark Notes version of Joseph, okay? But do you see why I'm bringing this up? I don't think. Does anybody know why I brought that whole story up? What have you taken away from that story? I haven't even gave you any of the punchlines, but I want you to realize something about that. Think about that. His dreams save him? Maybe. We'll talk about it. But, but come on. What's something you... I mean, what's the most disappointing part about this whole story? I think there's a very, very disappointing story, part about this. Huge, 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 huge disappointment. Let me start it with this. Imagine you had a dream like some of you do today. And then you have this dream that you're going to do all of this stuff. You get all excited. People may hate you for your dream. They might sell you and throw you into slavery because of your dream. But is that what his dream was supposed to look like? Imagine having a dream and then having your family betray you. 
Imagine having a dream and then getting sold off into slavery. Then imagine having a dream and then right when you think it's going good, it gets ripped up from you because somebody's lying on you because you just stuck to your morals. Imagine having a dream and then you get thrown into prison. Come on now. Do you see that? This is what I'm going to talk about. Yes, thank you. Somebody said it. He never gave up. And, and it's hard to def define what giving up was because he, he knew his dream, but he didn't know how it was going to play out, clearly. But he not only didn't give up, he didn't change. That's the key to notice. Because at, at one point through all of this, he, he, whether it was Potiphar's house, whether it was being sold into slavery, whether it was being in prison, he remained faithful like he was just a good dude. He was always about doing the right thing. He always stuck to the code. He held it down. He always tried to help people. He really was about his thing. He could be trusted. That's the thing. That's why Potiphar liked him. He could be trusted. He kept going. That's the, the key to this because I, I, I think about having all of these different dreams or having a dream, but at one point, it looked like his dedication would not pay off. But he still didn't change. And that's the key I'm going to talk about here today. He passed the dedication test. He was dedicated to his dream. And he did not give up. See, so this is who I'm talking for, the people with a dream. But now the people I'm calling out today, my question is, did you have a dream? And on the road to that dream being fulfilled and lived out, how many of you changed when it looked like the situation changed? And how many of you stuck to your guns? That's the question. That's who I'm talking about. The people with a dream. But how has the dream affected you and changed you? Mm. Kind of got quiet there. You guys got a little quiet. Are you okay? I hope so. Mm. What are you watching right now? You're watching lives being changed. Take a seat. <laughs> Or you can head out. Hey, man. Hey, man. Oh, I'm waiting. I'm, wait I'm waiting for it. I'm going to say, you guys got quiet there for a second. You guys got so quiet. Your hater had time to talk. Woo! That's good. I like it. They had, they had enough time to send three messages while y'all were thinking out there. Isn't that? Think about it. Y'all got quiet for a second. Woo! I love it. Hey, man. Because, no, I love this one. This one got me thinking. And I want to talk to you about some of the features. Or just some things to look for, honestly. And, and I don't know who, who, who this applies to. I know this applies to myself. Uh, and this is, a, is definitely shaped my life to understand certain parts at certain times. But I hope you know that dreams are fertilized in a stinky place. <laughs> Come on, man. Do you get that? Have you guys ever been around fertilizer? Do you guys know what plant fertilizer is? Think about fertilizer. Is fertilizer sweet smelling? Nah. It's not. See, you know fertilizer, most of the time it's shit. It stinks. It's awful. But isn't it funny what that does for the plants, though? See, we're talking about being grounded. We're talking about getting roots. We're doing all of that, right? That's what we keep talking about. It doesn't smell good. Yeah, the gardeners love this one. Well, I hope you know dreams are fertilized in stinky places. The fertilizer to your dream is oftentimes a shitty situation. And this is what I'm trying to tell some of you guys, too, because some of you have dreams, some of you don't. But maybe some of you are right on the cusp. And this is what I want to tell you is that if you're waiting for perfection to strike or you're trying to avoid the stinky places, you are missing your opportunity. Do you realize that? Some of you guys want it to be perfect. You say, no, 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 I'm going to plant my dream. I'll plant the seed and I'll do this once everything's figured out. You're saying once I get this place, I'll do this. 
because some of you are in stinky, shitty situations, and that's there to fertilize you and grow you and make you have roots and do all of this. But at the same time, some of you are waiting. You're like, it's too dirty. It's too messy. I can't do this right now. There's all, all this stuff. I got to wait till this happens, till this happens. And, and that's the point, though. Do you realize why I told you the story of Joseph? Y'all don't feel me. The point was, he was in a very stinky situation a lot of different times. But he kept going. And this is the point I'm trying to tell you. Some of you need to pass the dedication test. There's no such thing as somebody, some of you say, oh, I'm going to give it my best once this happens. Some of you say, I'm going to start making a long term once I, I succeed at day trading. You're like, I'm going to start saving money once I get money and once I'm rich. You're pretty much telling me you're not going to try and you're not going to be dedicated to something until it produces fire without giving the wood or the fuel. How many of you are dedicated to it before that happens? See, that's what separated Joseph from everybody else. That's why he could be trusted. Because God knows he only got one dream, got thrown in prison, sold away, got all of this stuff happened to him, but he still stuck with it. He eventually did become the king. Bet on that, he did. But it didn't happen because he said, well, well, I'll start doing the right thing once people start treating me right. Oh, I'll start doing this once people start doing that. Welcome to the dedication test. Some of you are avoiding the fertilizer. The situation you're in now, every single one of us has a challenge right now. And it is there to grow you or give you something. But how many of us are avoiding it? Because we don't see the opportunity within that. Or it just doesn't look like what a dream should look like. See, and that's the problem. Because if you can't be dedicated when it's messy, you are not going to be dedicated. You won't even get to that level where it's going to be good. So stop missing out opportunities. And some of you understand opportunities too. You know, you guys are going to know that some of you now... This is another level of you guys chasing dreams. Can I? I'm kind of a side tangent. Can I speak to the people who need to learn how to pick? Some of you guys need to learn how to pick opportunities now. And I'm not talking about the people who, who just pick any. I am talking about the people who pick anything. But I'm saying you need to learn the difference between good and better. Or the difference between good and great. Does anybody feel me on that? Because I'm saying some of you... You're avoiding the stinky places, which could be your opportunity. But then what's happening, there's another group. Some of you guys are pursuing stuff. This is, I love it. You want me to rename this God channel? I can't, man. This is, I'm talking finance right now. Because how many people in here are taking every fucking opportunity because they don't understand opportunity? So you're like, I'm going to go trade Forex. I'm going to go drop ship. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. I'm going to go do this. You're trying to get into a car wash business. You're trying to start this business, that business, because you know you, you have a dream to go somewhere. But there's no fertilizer and you're willing to take anything. Some of you are wasting your time on opportunities because you don't know the difference between good and great. Yeah, that's a good opportunity, but it's not great for you. It's not great for your talents, what you're doing. Honestly, how many people come to me and they, pit, they pitch me stuff all the time. It's, it may be a good cause, but it's not for me. I have a certain amount of time. I have a certain amount of resources. I have a certain amount of everything. That's why people get mad at me. They're like, Josh, you didn't listen to my idea. You didn't give me, you didn't give me a platform to talk about my story, my idea, my this, my that. I said, if you, you may have a good cause, but it doesn't mean that it's, it's for me. Some of you... You know you're, you're, you're doing good, and you're like, I need to get to that next level, but how many of you are willing to take anything versus finding what it is, planting it, and fertilizing it, and growing into that? Did you understand what I just said? I hope, I hope you guys did, for real. Because that's the next level for some of you in here. Some of you are going to have to learn this. This is a skill. This is, this is the armor. This is that helmet. 
Because some of you made 50 grand, 100 grand, 20 grand. You got your first house, whatever. What's the next level? This is just like richest man in Babylon when he makes money and then he tries to go to the next level. He's like, oh, well, we're going to give it to the Phoenicians. And we're going to do this. We're going to do that. Nah. You have to find the right thing. What was your initial dream? You see what I'm saying? Some of you had an initial dream to be an investor. How the hell did you end up owning an ice cream truck? A vending machine? How'd you end up investing in four different b businesses not related to... You're wasting your time. Y'all don't feel me. I hope y'all feel me. So know what it is and know your calling. And honestly, this see, this is another, I wrote this down, middle of the day. This was hilarious. If you guys were on the weekend video, there was a, and this is why, I mean, I love all of you, honestly. The people listening to this right now, especially the people who, who like resonate with Philo, amen. This will, this will make more sense to you too. Uh, if you were on the weekend videos, uh, people were commenting there was a fake account. Uh, you know, I get a lot of impersonators and there was a fake trading fraternity account. And it started messaging you guys on the comments, but I loved it. I saw like 10 different comments. You guys emailed me all that. But on the video, what somebody said, I loved it. It was great. And it made me feel low on it. Because someone was said, be gone. They said, be gone. You are not my cult leader. <laughs> Woo! I loved it. I loved it. Because it really got me thinking. I was like, damn. Because... Some of you know who it is. Some of you know what we do. You know what it teaches. You know it doesn't matter the name. You've never seen my face. Someone comes talking sideways in a certain way. You'd say, that's not my cult leader. You know the, you know the voice, but you don't really know the... You know what I'm saying? You know the behavior, the action, everything. And I was like, whoa. That just reminded me of God, where he's like, you know, that's how, that's how I feel with God. Where I'm like, you know, I see people all the time. I see something. I'm like, you're not my cult leader. You're not God. But then it, it made me realize this in, in just, just knowing a calling versus not. Knowing a voice versus not. Know your dream versus your, what's not. I loved it. I was like, damn, some people know and some people don't. So some of you, if you could even get that on the cult leader, some of you could feel this philo. Amen. You have a dream. And you also have a God. I hope you know the voice when it's calling you, and I hope you know your dream when it's calling you. Because you should know your voice when it's there. You should know what's really calling you. Do you see what I'm saying? Mmm. Ooh! It's exciting. So, what I want to talk about with dreams, man, I hope you guys are putting some of this together. It's a little haphazard. I'm going to get to the main points here, but I hope you know one of the big things. Well, I could have named this whole feel of this because, again, dreams stuck out to me. Dreams and seasons really stuck out to me today and over the weekend. All I kept thinking about was having the dream and taking it somewhere and, and, and the opportunity and knowing it, sticking to it, building it, all of that. I love it. But then there's another thing where it's like the seasons. And I don't know if I could remind you this. I, I need to remind you this. This is for everybody. Right now, you are going through a season. And I hope you know that. Joseph had a lot of seasons in his life. You need to understand how a season is going to work. Do you get that? Uncle talks about this. He says, you're getting beat if you're thinking that everything is the same. Life a seasonal game. Woo. But for real. I hope you understand this right now because every single one of you, what, I don't care what, what was this last three months for you? Was it good or bad? That was a season. What about the, the, the three months before that? Was it good or bad? That was a season. What about the three months before that? It was a season. How about the three months, the year, the five years? It was all a season. Do you get it? I just said back three months, six months, nine. Oh, okay, we're looking back. Awesome. Now, where are we today? That means we're in a season today. So then, what does that mean? Woo! Tell him, Troy. It means this too shall pass. Some of you are in a season right now, and guess what? It's going to be three months from now. That season's going to pass. 
My question is, do you recognize the seasons and now apply this into the framework of your dream, your goals, and what you want to accomplish? Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of you are in a good season. You need to recognize that and plan accordingly. Be wise. Understand it's a good season. If it's good, be blessed. Awesome. What if it's a bad season? That means it's not going to last like this forever, dude. Joseph went, he was sold into slavery. He wasn't a slave forever. Joseph went to jail. He wasn't a prisoner forever. He was winning and he was in Potiphar's house and he was successful. He was not successful forever. Even the whole nature of what Joseph came to do to save the Egyptians, the seven year cycle is literally based on seasons. Seven years of good, seven years of famine. So this is a reminder to understanding your dreams and what you're working on. At the end of the day, there's going to be a season. And all of you are through a season right now. And I hope you could recognize that. I hope I can remind you all, wake up, you're in a season. And honestly, I thought about it. Lately, I don't know what it was. I got a lot of emails from you guys. It was on Friday and as well as even the week before that. A lot of love. I'm extremely grateful for it. All the prayer requests, everything. And I love it. And, 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 I, and I felt really humbled. I got kind of sad because I was looking back at my last, you know, all of COVID. You know, we were talking about how crazy it was. And I had a lot of good and bad things happen. And it was wild to think about because I was like, damn. If, none of, if, I didn't have, if I didn't go through those seasons leading up to these last few weeks... None of you would have heard those philos that you've heard. You, you wouldn't have seen what you've seen. If everything didn't play out exactly how it did three, six, nine months ago, I don't think I would have got some of those emails from people saying their life changed or this one spoke to me or that one spoke to me. And I'm like, that's funny because you should have seen the season in my life what I gave it to you as. You should, it's it's kind of crazy to think about the season that I had to go through to give some of you guys that shit. Oh my God. Because then I'm... Because it's bittersweet. Do you see what I'm saying? Because I'm like, damn, if I got what I wanted six months ago, some of you would have not heard some of those things. Isn't that wild? But now I look back at it, I'm like, amen. Because I'm like, well, shit, some of those philos hit. I see a real change in some people. I've seen a real change in myself. It's wild, wild. It's very, very trippy. So think about that, but it's all seasonal. And that's why I hope I can remind some of you. I want, I, listen, this is for everybody with a dream because I don't want you guys to give up on a dream. I want some of you who are in this season right now where it doesn't look like it's, it's working, it's the fertilizer. And don't run away from it is what I'm trying to tell some of you. Because if I ran away, things would be different. I don't know what it would be like. And I hope you understand that. Don't ever live, it's kind of crazy. What would it be like? I don't know, but don't live like that. But at the end of the day, at every single point, like I said, for Joseph, it looked like his dedication wasn't going to pay off. But he didn't change. And that's the key. The seasons are going to change. But what are you going to do? Humans are not supposed to adjust with the seasons like that. You see what I'm saying? You have to survive. A lot of people try to adapt and change too much, but the idea is the seasons will change, but not you. That's what Joseph shows us. That's what life and success shows us in many ways. Jeff Bezos didn't change a lot from 2000 till now, believe it or not. Same concepts. The key is not letting the world in your external circumstance change your mindset, change your goal, change your vision, change your dream. I hope you understand that. And again, can you be dedicated to something now when there is no opportunity? That's my question to a lot of you. When, it, when you had a dream, you're like, oh, I could do this, I could do that. But how many of you could be dedicated when there's no opportunity? Honestly, you know I don't respond to a lot of messages and I tell people I don't expect a lot, don't expect a lot from me. You know why I tell people that? I heard this from T.D. Jakes. It was great. It's, it blew my mind. I really hope you know. Because when people meet me, 
even some of you guys in here on the chat, you do not treat me like a human being. You do not see me as a human being. You know how many people see me as an opportunity? Oh, you don't want to talk about that. Do you hear what I just said? Imagine all the people that are like, oh, well, they don't see Josh as this. They see it as an opportunity. They're saying, wow, I could learn how to do this. I could get into this. If I just get this guy as my friend. Oh, if this guy could do this. Come on. I know it's very heavy. Amen. That's why. Well, why do you think I, I say don't expect a lot? That's why. Why do you think I truly have so much love for some of the people who have been here for so long? Because what? They, I've show, I, they show me love. I've never responded back to them. I've never given them any special treatment. I've never gave them any opportunity that I wouldn't give to a random person on the internet. And they were still able to remain dedicated to the cult. They still were able to, to support the cult, the channel, everything, show love. They never switch sides on anything. You see why I have so much respect for people, the people with the badges, the people who've held it down. I will never forget any of the names from the people, Motor City Racing. That's one of those people from 50 people, 70 people. Because the question is, can you stay dedicated to something when there's no opportunity? Can you stay dedicated to a person if you don't think there's an opportunity? I'm not going to give you a job. Now do you still want to be a part of it? Some of you, you're not going to get uh, you're not going to be a millionaire next year. Do you still want to do it? Are you still going to get dedicated even if it's not going to give you what you think it is? What are you doing it for? Mm. I hope you feel me, man. Because I hope you know he was dedicated, Joseph. Joseph's dream was becoming a king. It was not going to jail. You get that? His dream was a lot different, but he went through some different stuff, but he stayed dedicated it no matter what. So, the, the point of all of this, if I can wrap it up into anything, it's know that there's opportunity in these challenges you're going to face. That is going to be your that is going to be your fertilizer. This is going to be your dedication test to make you stronger, to make you really have conviction in what you believe. Because when you do accomplish your dream, it's not going to be a half-assed story, dude. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to be like, yeah, I just saw the internet and I went on the internet and I said I want to be rich and then I didn't do anything and it was all success. No, it's not going to be like that. You're going to have a lot more conviction to know you were fertilized, that you were in a shitty place, that you didn't have the best seasons all the time and that's why you could stand in what you're standing in. Oh, they don't want to hear that. Hmm. Come on now. But that's the first part. Understand there's opportunity in the challenges you face. The next part is understand the seasons. All of you are going through one right now, good or bad. It will pass, but you are in a season. That's it. Stay committed no, what, no matter what, and that's the final point. Stay committed through the seasons and don't let them change you. Stay dedicated even if it doesn't look like your dream. If you could get through those seasons and stay dedicated and you don't let it change you, when you said I had a dream that I was going to be a king, but I'm in a prison, you got to keep going. I hope some of you could understand this because it's all just the season. And this is what I, I, I don't know. Does it put it all together? Understand the opportunity, the fertilizer, understand the season and don't change because of the seasons. Let the season change, but you must stay the same. And hold on to that goal. Hold on to that dream. And that's the key, though. It's a, it's a, it's a dream. I want, people, I want you guys to aim big. 
I want you all to change the world. I bet on that every single day of my life uh, for the last few years. That somebody in here is going to do it. Somebody. Maybe a lot more than just somebody. I don't know. But it comes to staying dedicated to that no matter what. And that's something I've seen by a lot of you. And I want that to be fertilized, that level of dedication. Some of you shown it to the cult in me. Amen. Show it to yourself and your goals too. But then also at the same time, some of you, you're waiting for the perfect opportunity. I rebuke it. Go. Farmer never plants if he waits for perfection. Some of you are waiting on something. You got to go. Get that dream. If you don't have a dream, you're going to die. You don't have a goal, you're going to go nowhere. So let's go. But at the same time, too, don't let it change you. It's one of the, I, I, I hope you know that with the seasons, and I hope you get through the seasons, because I don't want you to change, because it relates to the other philo. I hope you know that. Because when you go through those seasons, and you don't get what you want, or you end up in prison as one step before the king, and you change, that's when you become bitter. I hope you know that. That's where the bitterness comes in, is when you change. When you say, oh, I was doing this, but then this happened, so now I'm not doing that, and now I act like this. That's bitterness. The seasons change. You don't. Amen. So, to all my people with the dream, man, this is for you, and I hope you keep it. And I hope some of you understand that stinky smell is there to fertilize your dream. And whatever season you're in, good or bad, it is just the season. So keep that. I, I Honestly, I'm commanding a, a if, if I can say anything, it's going to be hope for some of you. Some of you is prepare because you're in a good season. Amen. Some of you, I hope you really just have the hope to know the season has been bad long enough. You are going to turn the corner, but you need to be looking for it with eyes open, ready to go, excited, and having hope that the winter is over. Do you see what I'm... Because it will not come, even if the season changes and you still think it's winter, it's not going to happen. You will still stay inside and feel all cold. Oh, it's not, dude, it's summer. It really is. But you need that hope for it. All right? So... I hope that helps you. I hope these reminders give you something to all the people with the dream. Stay dedicated to it no matter what, Spe especially when it looks like no opportunity. And shout out to all the people who did, baby. Shout out to all the people who did. But I hope it helps. Take it to the bank, baby. God bless you all. That is your philosophy. Make sure you guys are subscribed. We're live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. Drop your thumbs up on the video. You're on mobile. Press high chat to X out the chat. Hit the thumbs up button. Second link for the nightly watch list and main channel. First link for the Scream Alerts boot camp and real estate course. Follow me on Instagram at the trading fraternity. Keep it positive and respectful. New guys don't be too shy to say hi or too high to say shy. Hopefully, that helped you. And hopefully... Y'all ready for the seasons, baby? I hope you can stand up straight in the season you're in right now. Woo! Let's get some dreams, baby. The season, season, it's comeback season. It's earning season. So many seasons. I'm sorry, I get to it. I could get too excited. I could get too excited. I don't want to get too excited. You know what I'm saying? I could get too excited.